And this is a hooking intro that makes you excited to continue watch the video. Throughout our videos, we have discussed a lot of things about pointers in C and C++. And today we have the field tested manual for using pointers without getting the urge to delete yourself. First of all, what are pointers? Programs use a computer's RAM memory to do everything. And in here, there are a lot of different addresses that we can store the things we want at. Like having several stashes scattered around your city containing obscene amounts of and This can, as an example, be a normal int variable, x, that stores the value 5. So when we use a variable, the program checks the space in the memory assigned to this variable to see what is there. A pointer is different to a normal variable because it, instead of storing a direct value, stores the address of a value. To create the pointer, we first give the data type of which the pointer is pointing to, and then add an asterisk. This tells the program that the value the pointer holds isn't actually a value that we want but rather the address of a value somewhere else. Now let's say that we want to make this pointer point to the value of the variable x. This means that we need to assign the address of the x variable to the pointer. The program will then see that it is a pointer by the asterisk and check if the value of the pointer is a real location. Okay, so how do we do it? Do we just assign the variable x to the pointer? No, that's the thinking that made your parents divorce. Instead, we also have to add an ampersand before the x variable. This sign tells the program that we actually want to get the address of the variable next to it, not the value. So if we were to print out this, we would actually get the address of the x variable. Now it is said, if your intelligence is just slightly above the average IQ of League of Legends players, you might get that we actually also can have a pointer pointing to another pointer. As the pointer really works just like a variable, but instead of storing a value meant to be used in the program, it stores an address. Like I have your address stored. So the second pointer will direct the program to the first pointer, but since this also is a pointer, it would then tell the program to go to the address of the x variable. We can also have a pointer to 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 a Chapter 2 Pointer Arithmetic Pointer Arithmetic is the concept of adding and subtracting pointers in different ways. You probably, or should I say hopefully, know about strings. We use strings to print out messages and other things. However, strings are more or less actually just a bunch of char values in order in the memory. It's just these piss, you know, piss languages like C++ that have made you think of strings as another data type. Pointer arithmetic can be used to access each char value of the string so that we can print out the whole string. The pointer points to the address of the first character and then to get the next we will type pointer plus plus. This tells the program that the pointer now should point to the next value in the memory. And since all char values in a string are next to each other, this will be the next character of the string. Ooh, chapter 3! Now that we know a bit about pointers and strings, let's talk about malloc, calloc, realloc and free. But first, a memory block is a space in the memory that we can declare and store things in. So instead of your separate values, we have a big block of the same type of values next to each other. Think of it like, instead of just buying single cans of monster, League of Legends players buy large packs of 24. We can create these blocks by, as an example, using the Maddock function. If we were to write int pointers equal to Maddock 500, we will get a block of integers in the memory the size of 500 bytes. We then get a pointer back from the function pointing to the first address of the memory block. Calloc does the same thing as malloc. The only difference is that it also makes all the values be zero in the block. This also means that calloc is a bit slower than malloc and therefore probably not back. Calloc also takes in two arguments instead of one. Now realloc. Realloc is used to change the size of a memory block. So you would give the pointer given by the malloc or calloc function and then the new size that you want the block to be. Now free does pretty much the opposite of all of these. Instead of allocating memory, it deallocates it. This way we don't have to worry about running out of memory or any shit like that. Haha. <laughs> I use inappropriate words to show that I have high levels of testosterone and that I am over average size. Okay, we're almost done guys. Chapter 4, pointers versus arrays. Pointers and arrays may seem like playing League of Legends and being a virgin. Or being an average man and a raging alcoholic. Or being a Taylor Swift fan and unable to shut the f*** up. In other words, the same thing, but they are actually quite different. The concept of several values of the same type next to each other is the same. But pointers are contrary to erase dynamic. In other words, they can change depending on the program with malloc, calloc, realloc, and free. Like people's opinions change nowadays depending on a single tweet or TikTok. Anyways, this also means that pointers are better for managing memory, as you can free up memory after you're done using it. With erase, however, the memory that is declared at the start of the program will be there at the end. Now, the fifth and final chapter, El Quinto. 
quinto y último capítulo. Le quinquene et dernier chapter. Common mistakes and pitfalls. Have you ever been told that you're dangling out there and that you're hung like a horse? Well, I haven't, but I have been told that I have a lot of dangling pointers. These are pointers that point to data that already have been freed and deallocated. To avoid this, set the pointer to null after deallocating memory. Memory leaks. These happen when you forgot to deallocate memory and just let it sit there. This means that you can't use the storage anymore as it's occupied. And this leads to the computer running out of memory. And sometimes it makes the RAM's so-called memory pins burn off. This will destroy RAM completely by overheating. And sometimes this also leads to a melting of the motherboard. This means that all parts in your computer except for your power supply will die. So don't let memory leaks happen and deallocate all the memory that you're not using. Well, we're finally done. Please subscribe to my OnlyFans.